Hello there, and welcome to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Pam. And I'm Wendy. Good to see you again. Yes, good to see you. And we are, as usual, very excited about today's topic in the Botanist Garden Club because we get to talk about bulbs, but mm -hmm. not just any regular bulbs. Oh, unusual summer yeah. bulbs. Yes. The ones that you look at and go, oh, I can't grow those. Those yeah. are way too exotic looking. Way too difficult. <laughs> they look really fancy. Well, we're here to tell you that they're just as easy to grow as tulips, daffodils, crocuses, and all those other types of bulbs. But right. it is a bit confusing, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. When to plant, yes. how, and all of that. Sometimes people get a little confused because there are actually two planting seasons here in Canada. We plant in the fall all the bulbs, the, the things like tulips and daffodils right. and muscari, mm -hmm. and then they go to sleep mm -hmm. and they bloom in the springtime. Or so as you one. said, they... Oh. They, they chill. I miss it again. Yeah. <laughs> they chill out they in chill the winter time. Winter, that's right. <laughs> and then we have the spring planting season, and that's mm -hmm. when we plant things like the veggies and the perennials mm -hmm. and the roots and right. things like that. And, and the summer unusual bulbs. And we carry a great selection of them in the catalog. Yeah. And they do look pretty special, but yeah. boy, they're easy, easy, easy. Yeah, they're really easy. And the reason that they are kind of special is because they come from areas of the southern hemisphere, mm -hmm. you know, below the equator. So places like South America, uh, South Africa, the Mediterranean, Central America, places like that. Yes. So we want to try and mimic yeah, those, conditions those conditions as much as we can exactly. to get the best out of them. Because they're all co considered perennials where mm -hmm. they're actually born yeah. and they will come back year after year after year. Mm -hmm. And with some care and attention, we can actually bring them back ourselves mm -hmm. every year. They are perennials. Yeah. And our summers are typically pretty warm. I actually think back east gets a warmer summer than we do here on the yeah. west coast. But we still have a, a longer growing season. So you, mm -hmm. you, we've got a longer growing season that's a little cooler and they have the really warm summers that might be a little shorter. Perfect for growing these mm -hmm. beautiful exotic bulbs. And what I really like about them too is when you plant them in the spring, you are going to get blooms this summer. Yeah. Just like the tulips, when you plant them in the fall, you're going to get blooms the following spring. Mm -hmm. And so they're a pretty, uh, you know, a quick satisfaction. You get great right. satisfaction from them because they do grow and bloom so quickly. Mm -hmm. And some are later blooming in the season, but mm -hmm. they, they do bloom for you that first year. Right. But we're finding there are some things that we want to tell people that'll make it a little bit easier for them, a little more successful, right. shall we say. Right. And the biggest thing to do for them is to grow them in containers. Mm -hmm. And then, gosh, there's just a myriad of things that work by doing it that way. Mm -hmm. Because in a container, first of all, you can control the nice quality of soil you put it in, mm -hmm. plus the drainage. That's, right. first of all, key. Yeah. yeah. And next, of course, is the sun exposure. Now, this is, remember how we mentioned they all come from the southern hemispheres? Well, pretty much the warmer you can make their environment like home, the better uh, you know, the better flowers you're going to get, the, right. the better results you're going to have. That's so right. in a container, you it, can control that. You can control that because the warmth is going to come from all sides. You're just going to enjoy a nice sunny spot right. as opposed to being in the garden. Yeah. When the soil in the springtime mm -hmm. can be quite cold. Yeah. And if you think about that, there is, you know, acres and acres of, of soil cool and a little bit moist from the springtime mm -hmm. and there's a nice black pot that you put gravel on the bottom, some really nice soil in it, and you put your little bulb in there, mm -hmm. and then you set it, say, under the eaves in a southern exposure. Yeah. So it gets all that warmth. The soil warms up very quickly, the roots get generated a little bit faster, and you get results all that quicker. Mm -hmm. Drainage is key too. You yes. have to have good drainage because you want to water them. and You do. And we say that for all containers because mm -hmm. there's pretty much very, well, there's very few plants that just like to sit in water-drenched soil. Yes. So good <laughs> drainage is key. And you want to protect them a little bit from the wind. Yes, that's you another know. point. And that's a, a great to, a thing too. You can actually move the containers around mm -hmm. to many different spots in the yard. So while they are, you know, preparing to, to, fl to bloom and while they're mm -hmm. preparing to even shoot greenery up, mm -hmm. they can be placed in a, a certain area for maximum growth right. potential. And then once they get to almost blooming, yeah. say if you're having a garden party or if you want an mm -hmm. area to look particularly fabulous, yeah. you move them all to that area and then have them bloom there. So that container is practical but it's also quite functional when it comes to being gorgeous. Right. Now, one thing we should mention is most of the unusual summer bulbs um, are not winter hardy for 
Canada, which means you will have to lift and store them. Now, or, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. if you have them in containers, yeah. you can take those containers into a nice cold and dark and frost-free location for the winter mm -hmm. to chill a little. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, if you did plant them in the garden, we should mention, you can still do yeah. that. I mean, that, that, is a, that is an option for you. And if you have them planted in the garden, you will need to, again, lift and store them in the fall. Usually in the fall, you'll go out there, you're doing some bulb planting anyways with your tulips and your daffodils. Right. Just go out and you're going to dig up those summer tender bulbs, let them dry out a little bit, you know, brush off any excess soil and right. store them in a cardboard box right, with, with some shredded, shredded newspaper. Paper. Yeah. yeah. And we always tell people to don't just leave them for the whole winter. Do check on them. Mm -hmm. Even if they're in a container or in a storage box, make sure you go in, take a look at them. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that looks a little funky, then you might want to trim it off and put yeah. a little cinnamon on it and then slip it back in. Or if it seems damp, then change it all up and put in some drier newspaper. Right. Because they, they you know, they're living bulbs, actually. Yeah, they're not yeah, dead. Exactly. They're just sleeping. So That's keep, right. make sure they're protected while they're sleeping. Exactly. Because the key point is they are perennial. And yeah. you want to remember that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, some of the ones that we want to touch on, just to give you an idea of exactly what are we talking about, well, probably the largest group of unusual summer bulbs that we carry are the dahlias, which are so fabulous. If you love flowers and lots of flowers, <laughs> then dahlias are the way to go. Uh, I particularly like one called night butterfly. I grew that and the bees love it. That's oh. one, and I know yeah. that's important to you as well as me and everybody out there. Right. When it has a bee magnet mm -hmm. attached to it, that's that's one yeah. I want to grow. And it's so intricate looking, yeah. this particular daily, and it that harks back to what we said at the beginning about things that are unusual looking, maybe exotic looking, potentially one thinks, oh, they're <laughs> difficult to grow. Dahlias are not. Oh, and no, I, no. I love that you can be harvesting blooms in the fall season. Exactly. So many farmers markets have wonderful dahlias uh, that you can purchase. And why not grow them yourselves? And you have all those wonderful cut flower bouquets yeah. to bring inside. And in fact, the more you cut, the more blooms you get. Mm -hmm. And they are perfect for containers. Mm -hmm. If anything was sort of built for a container, the dahlias are that. Yes, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. And they come in all shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. We've got everything from pom-pom dahlias, which are those lovely ball type, to the <gasps> giant dinner plate, which are magnificently huge. We have fringed, we have cactus. Oh, oh yeah. there's just, a, as I said, it's a very large category for us. So there's really a size and a shape and a color for every gardener out there. Exactly. And there's also these beautiful things that you might recognize from wedding bouquets and mm -hmm. uh, funeral bouquets actually too mm -hmm. unfortunately but the calla lilies is quite a fabulous uh, grouping of plants mm -hmm. and we have chosen this year a really nice selection but I particularly like calla captain romance mm -hmm. because it's got a really dark sort of raspberry pink it almost goes a little bit lighter to the throat and then goes down into the green mm -hmm. and the callas come from South Africa but the beauty of them is you get one bulb it might seem rather pricey mm -hmm. but for that bulb you get like a bouquet of flowers yeah. it's not just one it's you right. know, four and five and sometimes yeah, a little more grown out of that one yes. and bulb. they last forever mm -hmm. they do look very tropical but when they bloom they are gosh I think yeah. indestructible yeah. But two weeks later it's still got its color four weeks later it starts to turn green so it looks like a leaf mm -hmm. and even at that point very interesting very interesting and they have great foliage too often yes, spotted mm -hmm. really Spiky. really cool looking flowers and incredible in window boxes or in containers they, they really do suit that right now speaking of foliage plants that are fun to grow colocasia or elephant ears is another one comes from southeast asia it's southern one of our india. yeah so southern india. india exactly it's sort of one of those really spectacular unusual summer bulbs now the colocasia have big leaves that the yeah, that sort of hang down huge. and they do they kind of look like elephant ears and the great thing about that one too is you can grow it outside bring it in during the winter and you can enjoy it all winter long yeah. inside it is a fabulous plant mm -hmm. put it in a nice corner in a nice sunny spot where it's going to get uh, some great sun exposure during yeah. the winter water it well and they make amazing indoor plants as well don't you love that mm -hmm. I do yeah. I really do and it's a some, great one it is some plants sort of defy any kind of categorizing and that one is for me mm -hmm. is many advanced yeah. otherwise known as Peruvian daffodil mm -hmm. and it comes from the southern hemisphere yeah. Peru to be precise and actually it was used in the olden, olden times mm -hmm. for perfume. Yeah. And that's why wow. we recommend it. The fragrance is crazy, off the charts, just so beautiful. And the flower follows suit. Mm -hmm. There is uh, little petals and little mm -hmm. uh, shooting off white 
gorgeousness that come yep. out of this flower. And if you have one in your garden, they're actually quite large mm -hmm. and they've got beautiful strapping foliage mm -hmm. and that fragrance will follow you around the garden. Mm -hmm. And I think that most of these flowers actually have sort of more than one purpose or a lot of the unusuals have such long histories. Mm -hmm. They've been used for perfume, they've been used for food. Mm -hmm. So they are beautiful to us, but they actually have served well in yeah. over the years. They've been around for a long mm -hmm. time. And if you haven't tried any of these unusual bulbs that we've mentioned, you know, do visit our website. They're listed there very clearly, unusual bulbs. You'll see them in our catalogs as well. Give them a try. They're very, very easy, very fun to grow, very exotic. You can kind of show off a little bit to your gardening <laughs> friends. Oh, look what I grew. <laughs> They'll be very impressed. Oh, they will be very impressed. Now, if you are a regular viewer, you know what's coming next. It is our question and answer section. We always like to give things away because mm -hmm. I like to win stuff. I, I do too. Yeah. And we know from contacting people that they love to win stuff too. That's right. So, so we're going to ask you a question this week. And the question is, are summer bulbs perennial? Hmm. How easy is that? Yeah, I think we mentioned that a couple uh, of times. I think we did mention that a couple of times. Now, you're going to send the answer to that question to... Garden Club at botanus.com. Right. Just send an email to that right. address. That's right. With the answer, and we're going to draw three lucky winners, and they'll each get a $10 gift certificate. <laughs> Maybe to buy a, a nice yeah. little summer unusual bulb. Exactly. Why not? Yeah. So this has been fun, Pam. It has. This is a subject that I absolutely love and could talk about forever, and I yeah. know you can too. I know. There's yeah. so many. I mean, we only literally touch yeah. the tip of the iceberg floating in uh, South America. <laughs> Literally, there are so many bulbs to choose from. We really encourage you to try them because they are great fun. Mm -hmm. And this has been great fun being with you here today. Yes, of course, with and, you too. Uh, yes, and of course we're going to come back again next week with another fabulous episode. We want to thank you so much for watching today and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye-bye.